appreciate you. So uh, good morning and namaste from IIT Gandhinaga. We continue this uh, seventh edition of our course on Indian knowledge systems, uh, which this year is dedicated to the living traditions of Sanskrit. And the objective is to show, illustrate through a variety of speakers and scholars, as usual, how Sanskrit remains alive in India's cultural and social life. Uh, today we have Dr. Prasad Bhide with us, who teaches Sanskrit uh, in a college in uh, Mumbai. Uh, his strength is in linguistics, apart from Sanskrit, and also in Sanskrit drama. And uh, the, his original contribution, as we will see more tomorrow, is the uh, reenacting of Sanskrit drama in contemporary performances. So without further introduction, because as always, you can see his full profile and the detailed abstract of today's uh, and tomorrow's talks on our website, iks.itgn.ac.in. Uh, I will request Dr. Prasad Bhide to come and deliver his talk for today. And uh, as always, we will keep some 15 minutes for interaction towards the end. And the talk continues tomorrow but with a different timing, that will be 10 a.m. Thank you. Namaste. A uh, very good morning to one and all, those uh, who are present in this class and uh, those who are present attending this talk online. I'm very happy to see the young uh, students of engineering coming to attain this session on theater drama, that too on Sanskrit drama. And I would like to begin this session by reciting a Sanskrit verse. I'm sure at least some of you have studied Sanskrit language in your school. I'm reciting this verse for several reasons. According to our tradition, we should offer a prayer to the desired deity. So this is this verse is actually a prayer to Lord Shiva. The verse that I am going to recite now is a very popular verse actually. So those uh, who are trained in any form of classical dance, may it be Kathak or Bharatnatyam, recite this verse perhaps at the beginning of their rehearsal every time. So I have chosen this verse. And another more important reason for choosing this verse is this verse is significant from the point of view of Shastra. Natya Shastra, obviously, because it refers to an important element of theory of enactment. So the verse goes like this. Angikam bhuvanam yasya vachikam sarvavangmayam Aharyam Chandrataradi Tamnumasatvikam Shivam. So, if we look at the last part of the verse, last phrase, Tamnumasatvikam Shivam, we understand that this is a prayer offered to Lord Shiva. And Shiva's association with performing art is well known. Shiva in the form of Nataraja is regarded as the desired deity of theatrical performance or any performing art for that matter. You can see an idol of Lord Shiva as Nataraja on the slide as well. Interestingly, Lord Shiva, as described in this verse, has an association with Abhinaya, enactment, 
as translated into English. And in fact, this verse describes four forms of Lord Shiva, which are the four aspects of Abhinaya enactment. So if anyone present over here really wants to try his or her skills in acting, should understand the meaning of this verse. The verse says that Abhinaya, the enactment, has four aspects. Angika, Vachika, Aharya, and Sattvika. Angika is the use of body language. Vachika is the speech, the diction. Aharya is all outer means, the decoration, makeup, costumes, and all. And Sattvika is regarded as the essence, the soul of enactment, the temperament. So this verse states that Lord Shiva appears in all these four forms. So on one hand, it is a prayer offered to Lord Shiva. And on the other hand, it is like a karika, you know, a verse that states an important principle of the Shastra. And as I said, this verse is very popular. I have seen, uh, you know, many dancers reciting this verse at the beginning of the rehearsal. So I thought of choosing this verse. And at the outset, I also thank the organizers for inviting me to deliver this talk in this course that is called Leaving Traditions of Sanskrit. And I'm supposed to speak about, speak on drama. So as a speaker and also as a student, I would like to you know, look at the whole episode a bit skeptically. And I only have a few questions in my mind or I, I, uh, I assume that the students or the participants should have these doubts in their mind that drama, to be specific, Sanskrit drama, is it really a living part of the Indian tradition? Is it really relevant, whatever Sanskrit, you know, uh, dramas have been written in Sanskrit language, are they really relevant today? We are living in an age where we see the flooding of audiovisual media, isn't it? Through many ways, YouTube and OTT platforms and in fact, you know, the whole arena of performing art is highly influenced by audio-visual media these days. So what is the place of Sanskrit drama in today's world at present? So these are, these are the questions which we should have in our mind. <clears throat> and I have divided this session into two parts. In first part, we will refer to some terms in Natya Shastra, which is believed to be an authentic manual of theatrical performance, believed to have been written somewhere near first or second century. We are going to see some terms from this text Natya Shastra in order to understand our idea of audiovisual media. And then in second part, that is tomorrow, I would like to do some demonstration, the way in which Sanskrit drama was actually performed in those days. Let me show an interesting video at the beginning. I will just brief about what are we going to see. No problem. Right. So the title of this course is Leaving Traditions of India. This video is actually a scratch of a recording 
from uh, the rehearsal of one of our plays uh, as uh, sir said i am affiliated to a college in mumbai and uh, we perform plays in sanskrit language along with our students so this is a nandi shloka the benediction of one of our modern sanskrit plays so let us see the video first and then we will go ahead yes so i hope you all enjoyed the video this is a <clears throat> this is a song that is technically called nandi nandi a benedictory verse 
and this nandi is uh, from one of our modern sanskrit plays written by a sanskrit scholar sanskrit professor dr manjusha gokhale this is again the prayer offered to lord shiva but describing the aksha krida that shiva and parvati play the game of dice that shiva and parvati play just for amusement you know this performance that we saw just now is in consistency with the form in which plays are performed in maharashtra or plays used to be performed in maharashtra that is called sangeet natak and every sangeet natak begins with such a song called nandi and this has been borrowed from the sanskrit theater which is based on natya shastra i showed this video just you know as an example or as an evidence for the claim that sanskrit theater it's still surviving it is still living and this is not the only example yakshagana in karnataka and sanskrit theater sanskrit drama and natya shastra it's still alive in a number of folk forms of performing art as today audio visual media is quite influential likewise in ancient times drama the audio visual media was a very effective means of amusement as well as educating people but what is our idea of drama what is our idea of this audio visual visual form of performance we all know that in indian languages like hindi marathi gujarati we use a term natak natak but the word natak is not used in the sense in which it is used in languages like marathi hindi and gujarati you know in modern languages natak is parallel to drama but in sanskrit language and to be specific in natya shastra it is not so we see three terms in natya shastra that refer to this kind of performing art the theatrical performance natya roop and roopak the term natya is derived from the verbal root nata this nata is an alteration of the verbal root nrut nrut associated with nritya which means to dance nata also means to move the body in a specific way so natya is essentially about body movements in a specific way natya at a rudimentary level primarily is close to nrutya or nritya again nrutya and nritya are two different terms nrutya is just movement of the body on a rhythm on the other hand nritya is moving the body on a specific rhythm to convey something maybe to narrate a story so those who are trained in kathak do understand the difference between nritya and nritya so we are just doing foot movements on a specific rhythm it is nritya but if we are narrating the story of krishna and radha through a dance it is not merely nritya it is nritya and natya has association with these two words nritya and nritya primarily it is dancical we do get references to this in literature as well so there are statements like natakam nrityavah or sattakam nrtamah this is in prakrut of course sattaka nataka nrityavah let us dance let us dance the drama so natya is a body movement then comes the term roop roopyate iti roop we have this word in hindi as well hindi marathi all indian languages roop 
that which is seen, that which can be seen is rupa. So I quote Dhananjaya, Dasha Rupaka, a very significant commentary on Natya Shastra. He says that Avastha Anukruti Natyam Rupam Drushataya Uchati. He says that Natya is Anukruti, that is imitation of Avastha, of various states. And it is termed as Drushya because of Rupatva. Rupa, which means that which can be seen. And since drama is to be seen primarily, it is called Rupa. This Rupatva distinguishes drama from other types of fine and performing arts as well as literature. We will talk about this in detail when uh, we will see an interesting story from Natya Shastra. And another term for drama in Natya Shastra is Rupaka. We see this term Rupaka even in poetics, isn't it? You all must have studied the figures of speech in your school days in Marathi, Hindi, Indian languages as well as in English. So there was a figure of speech called, there is a figure of speech called metaphor, which is termed as Rupaka in Sanskrit. So what is a metaphor? What is a rupaka? And why is a drama termed as rupaka? If we look at the concept of metaphor, perhaps we get an idea about why this term is used for drama in our tradition. So, you know, most of the alankaras figures are based on comparison. So there is a comparison between A and B. When we say A is like B, it becomes simile, upama, hai na? But when we say A, it's so much like B that now there is no difference between A and B. A is B. This is rupaka or metaphor. Now, let us think over this. Why is drama termed as Rupaka? By using this term, the Shastrakaras, the tradition, tells us that this type of performing art is a type of Rupaka in itself, is a type of metaphor in itself. For example, if we are watching a drama based on the story of Ramayana, actor A is performing the role of Rama in that play. He is our good friend. We knew him very well. Perhaps that's why we are attending this performance. We even go and meet him in the green room before the performance. His name can be anything A, B, C, X, Y, Z. He might be our good friend, school friend. But when we go and sit in the auditorium and the curtain is raised and Mr. XYZ or ABC enters the stage and starts delivering the dialogues as given in the script, do we really look at him as our school friend, Mr. ABC? No way. We do not. For us, for the duration of the play, maybe two and a half hours or three hours, that Mr. ABC is none other than Ram. And this is true about all types of audiovisual media, not only theater, not only drama. This is true even about films. And that is why, you know, these heroes and popular, uh, you know, actors and actresses are uh, invited as brand ambassadors of different products. You know, because we are influenced by the roles that they have played in a particular film. Right? So, for example, Sunny Deol or Ranbir Singh when plays a particular role in a particular film, we do not look at him as a person, Sunny Deol or Ranbir Singh. We look at him as a strong police inspector who can control gundas in the gully. 
right so for the whole duration of that performance we are actually experiencing a metaphor a rupak and this happens at all levels you know at different levels at first the actor has to understand this similarity between a and b where a is he himself or herself and b is a character that he or she is going to play they have to understand that similarity only then they can convey that character effectively on stage and if they convey it effectively if they carry that b effectively in themselves then audience is able to you know relate to it the episodes or the incidents that we see on stage or even in a film are the representations most of the times of the real life situations real life incidents although we know that whatever we are seeing on stage or in a film is not real it is just a theatrical representation it is just an artistic representation we do not really feel so when we are watching a movie or a drama right although we know that this is not real but for those two or three hours it is the reality for us isn't it and in this way this a is b notion prevails at all levels and in that sense any audio visual media is a kind of rupak so this is the idea of theatrical performance in our tradition we don't find the use of the word natak in the text of natya shastra the way in which we use it today in a general way natak is in fact one type of 10 different types of rupakas there is something called dasha rupaka that means 10 different types of rupakas nataka is one of them but this kind of performance is primarily referred to as rupa or rupaka now let me take you to an interesting story a legend from natya shastra a detailed documentation about the performance of these rupakas has been done in this text called natya shastra and sage bharat is believed to be the author of natya shastra it has 36 chapters and approximately 6000 verses in it and a variety of topics covered in this text most of the scriptures in indian knowledge tradition the shastras in indian knowledge tradition are in the form of a dialogue there is a dialogue between the guru the preceptor and the disciples even this text begins with a dialogue between sage bharat who is the author of the text and his disciples and sage bharat at the beginning itself tells the story about the creation of this text natya shastra and also the story about the performance of the very first drama so there is lot of drama involved in the performance of the very first drama the story goes like this long long ago just as every legendary story begins in treta yuga so we all know that traditionally you know there are four yugas satya yuga is the first one and in every yuga there is influence of some guna sattva raj tam etc so treta yuga is the time span when there was influence of rajo guna so rajo guna is about all material pleasures so because of the influence of material you know this rajo guna people had a lot of greed towards material pleasures consequently 
they were infatuated by vices like anger jealousy you know typical kali yuga kind of but kali yuga is <laughs> you know the the peak point of this so in that treta yuga people were experiencing all this vices and therefore they were experiencing a lot of discontent dissatisfaction they were not happy just as most of us are not today and therefore you know we 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 feel we get tired by our routine and we need some change we need a break as we say so even in treta yuga people really wanted to have a break from the routine and all these feelings of discontent and dissatisfaction so they all approached the gods and gods took them to the king of gods indra and indra came to know about their demand and he decided to take all of them all human beings gods demons everyone to the greatest god that is brahma the creator and approaching brahma they all said this kridaniya kam ichhamah drushyam shravyam cha yad bhavet o god we are really tired of the sad life we need some kridaniya kam we need some amusement we need a toy which is drushya and shravya there are two words which need attention one is kridaniya ka and another is drushya so the very first demand the basic demand to lord brahma was we need a toy and in response to which the creator has created natya and natya veda subsequently so in our tradition it is basically a kridaniya it is a means of amusement it is something which gives us break from the routine it is something which is like a medicine over the feeling of discontent and dissatisfaction you know what is the motive behind performance is a question that is always asked to the performers why do you act why do you write why do you direct one primary answer to this we get from this word kridaniya is just to get a break from the routine and you know if we use the sanskrit term inconsistency with poetics to move away from the material discomfort discontent and to get anand the sanskrit word is nirvrutti sadya para nirvrutti is a motive behind creation that's what kavya prakash says sadya immediate para superior nirvrutti anand right so one motive behind performing or watching a performance is to get this nirvrutti anand bliss and this toy is drushya and shravya these are the adjectives that are used for this toy it is drushya and shravya drushya is derived from the verbal root drushya pashya which means to see and shravya is derived from shru shrunoti which means to hear so drushya shravya means visual as well as audible so this is a toy which is audible as well as visual moreover drushya drushyata is the distinguishing feature of this toy because there are other means of amusement which might be shravya which might be in other form but this particular means of amusement in particular is drushya visual what does it mean number 1 it distinguishes drama 
from other types of fine and performing art. So there could be other performing or there could be other fine arts which are drushya, which are visible, which can be enjoyed by watching, say painting. But they are just drushya, not shravya. And on the other hand, there are certain things, there are certain means of amusement which are enjoyed by hearing. Shravya, that means different types of literature. May it be a poem like Raghuvamsha, Kalidasa's Raghuvamsha, Meghadut. May it be a novel or anything else. But they are only Shravya, they are not Drushya. So in this way, Drushyatva distinguishes drama from other types of arts on one hand and other types of literature on the other hand. Hearing this demand of gods and people and, and human beings and demons, Brahma decided to meditate for a while and then he remembered the four Vedas and created another Veda which is called Natya Veda or Panchama Veda. You know, although we are repeatedly uttering this term Natya Shastra, Natya Shastra, we do not find this term Natya Shastra being used in the text itself. There we find the word Natya Veda or Panchama Veda. Panchama Veda means the fifth Veda. Why so? Why fifth Veda? Why Panchama Veda? Because it was derived from the four Vedas. Namely, Rigveda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. So what did Brahma do? Jagraha Pathyam Rigvedat Samabhyogi Tamevacha Yajur Vedat Abhinayan Rasana Tharvanadapi he borrowed one element from each of the four Vedas. So he borrowed Pathya from Rugveda, Gita from Samaveda, Abhinaya from Yajurveda, and Rasa from Atharva Veda. But before we go ahead, let me just clarify that Rugveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atharva Veda, these are not like watertight compartments. They share, you know, the text up to a great extent. We can consider them as four aspects of the same text. I, I won't uh, elaborate over it due to lack of time. So he took Pathya from Rugveda. Now what is Pathya? Pathya is literally translated as a text. So that which was to be, you know, shown on stage, the story part, he took from Rugveda. Why? Because Rugveda if we see in isolation, it has, you know, uh, is not necessarily a religious text. It is poetic in nature. We find a number of stories in the hymns in Rugveda. Okay. It is not only about the rituals. So there is a hymn called Usha Sukta, which is a very nice description of, you know, the scenic beauty of morning. There is a hymn called Aksha Sukta, which is like a monologue of a gambler. There is a hymn called Sarama Pani Sukta, which is a very interesting story on corruption, Brashtachar. So, all, you know, Rugveda had a lot of material for scripting. Therefore, Jagraha Pathyam Rugveda, Samabhyo Gita Mevacha. Sangeet, the music part, was borrowed from Samaveda because. These ruchas, okay, these hymns, suktas in Rugveda are recited in a very melodious way in Samaveda. So Samaveda is primarily about melody. Therefore, it is said that he borrowed Sangeeta from Samaveda, Yajurveda Abhinayan. And Abhinaya, that means enactment, was borrowed from Yajurveda. Yajurveda is mainly about the rituals. You know, this scenic beauty 
descriptions of scenic beauty in Rugveda takes the form of a mantra, a chant in Yajurveda, which is you know used in various yajnas, in various rituals. But what is the association of Abhinaya with Yajurveda? Why is it said that Abhinaya, the enactment was borrowed from Yajurveda? Because rituals are symbolic in nature. Rituals also have the element of Rupaka in them. Isn't it? So in, you know, in Yajna, in a Yajna, when something is offered into the fire, why is it offered? Because fire is regarded as the mediator between human beings and deities. And we believe that when we offer something into the fire, fire takes it to the desired deity. So if we say Indraya Swaha, the fire will take it to Indra. The whole affair is symbolic. Isn't it? We offering something into the fire, it's symbolic. Fire regarded as a symbol, a mediator, right? And the action of taking that offering to Indra is also symbolic. So rituals also involve an element of Rupaka enactment in it. And you know, there are a number of rituals which actually involved enactment like a drama. Again, due to want of time, we cannot really elaborate over it. This is just, you know, we are just taking an overview. Therefore, it is said that Abhinaya was borrowed from Yajurveda and then finally, Rasan Atharvanadapi. Atharva Veda you know, is different from the first three Vedas. Rugveda, Yajurveda and Samaveda. Atharva Veda is a latter creation. Atharva Veda also comprises of you know, number of rituals and practices and mantras that were prevalent in the folk tradition. Atharva Veda is more, you know, about the material world. Rasa is a term that we find in Atharva Veda, which is borrowed to Natya Shastra directly as a term and you know, in essence, it suggests something. The meaning of the word rasa in Atharva Veda is different from its meaning in performing art. I know you all uh, must have heard the word nava rasa. Shrungara, Veera, Karuna, Adbhuta, Hasya, Bhayanaka, Bibhatsa, Raudra, Shanta. These are nava rasas, nine sentiments. Right? This is a meaning of rasa in Natya Shastra, but in Atharva Veda, rasa is not the emotion. In Atharva Veda, rasa has an association with Ayurveda. So it could be understood, you know, as an extract of something. So the term is borrowed as it is, but not the sense, not the meaning. We can probably associate the meaning, its meaning, in Natya Shastra with the content of Atharva Veda, as I said, it was more about the material world, various emotions, feelings, and all. Now, this is how this particular verse is interpreted by scholars. The association of Natya Shastra with four Vedas, because of which it was called Panchama Veda. According to another viewpoint, this particular verse, you know, comes in order to give recognition to Natya Shastra along with the four Vedas. And there are different interpretations of the verse. For me, as a practitioner of drama, I think this verse states four core elements of any theatrical performance. At first, there has to be Pathya. Pathya here does not merely mean a text. It does not mean a script. It means the content. When a dancer enters a stage to dance, a singer to sing, or an actor to perform something, to enact, they must have something to share with the audience. Unless they have it, the performance 
does not become effective isn't it you just remember we watching a movie sometimes we like a movie sometimes we do not and especially when we do not like a movie one obvious reaction is are kuch nahi tha yaar usme there was nothing in the movie what is this which we were looking for i think it is a content even aristotle talks about it he says that the most important element of a drama is the content so patya is a content the first and foremost element of a theatrical performance then comes music decoration part when we see the sanskrit drama in practice we find that it was highly influenced by music and it is obvious because it was primarily in the form of nritya dance and dance cannot be performed without the accompaniment of music so the dramatic performances in ancient india were primarily musical even today if you see you know one example of living tradition of theater is a tradition of kudiyattam in kerala if you see some youtube you know some videos of kudiyattam on youtube you will find that it is highly dominated by music and percussion to be specific so samabhyo geetam eva cha conveys that music plays a very significant role in any performance and you know to indian mind specifically music is very important for soothing just remember the popular movies they were all musical to give a very recent example the indian movie that has won oscar has won for what it is for the dance which is on a specific rhythm not to not to right so this is the importance of music rhythm in a theatrical performance and abhinaya enactment is another core element so that is how because it is drushya no it is not merely shravya it is drushya this is where you know indian concept our concept of drama differs from that of greek drama i just said that aristotle says that i quote he says that the tragedy has such a power that it can be felt even without action and performer what does that mean it means that he is attaching extreme significance to the text and delivery of text verbally but for us abhinaya is fourfold angika vachika aharya and satvika and in that angika comes first because it is drushya and rasan athar vanadapi it is purposely placed at the end in the description of four elements of drama because it is regarded as the core of any theatrical performance for that matter any audio visual media according to indian knowledge tradition for us may it be poetics or dramaturgy the ultimate motive of a performance or a creation should be rasa nishpatti that means the generation of the sentiment sentiment over here emotion over here is different from the ordinary experience of different emotions that we have so we get our you know we get to see our score card at the end of the semester exam and we feel happy that is not rasa you know we sometimes confuse that if karuna rasa is a sad feeling then any sad feeling is karuna rasa not really that experience has to be aesthetic only then it becomes it is termed as rasa or rasa avishkar right so the disappointment that we feel 
after you know hearing an unexpected news is not rasa but if we go and watch a movie watch a drama which is over powered with pathos karuna rasa the experience that we get is an aesthetic experience therefore it is rasa so these are the four core elements of any performing art according to natya shastra let us go ahead into the story this comes uh, a little later so brahma created the natya veda and called indra again and he said that as per your demand i have created this natya veda he he does not say i have created natya veda rather he says that i have created itihas this is another term used in natya shastra for natya shastra itihas because in earlier times the text of drama the stories of dramas were mainly legendary stories the stories of war between devas and dhanavas even you know in practice the point where we find the origin of drama in indian culture consists of narration of legendary stories with the help of music and enactment and all we can talk about this later maybe at some other point on some other occasion so he uh, he called indra and said that i have created itihasa so perhaps probably he created natya shastra and you know as just as we add supplement appendices likewise he must have added some scripts as well to it and said that now you please bring this into practice surprisingly indra said no sir i cannot i cannot bring this text into practice because gods are not capable of applying this natya shastra applying this shastra into practice not capable in what sense he said they are not physically as well as mentally fit or emotionally fit for the performance see i am you know i am narrating only that part of the story which is important from the point of view of understanding our idea of a drama and other means of performing art he says that gods are not capable of performing a drama that means a performer needs you know there are some eligibility criteria to be a performer as per our tradition you have to be physically fit because it is mainly about angika abhinaya but it is not enough you have to be emotionally fit because the core the soul of the performance is rasa nishpatti there are different point of views about how the rasa nishpatti takes place that means how does the audience actually have that aesthetic experience there are different theories but you know to make it simple we can say that the actor or actress has to first understand the emotion in the text just to give an example if someone is performing the role of mahatma gandhi and in the last frame of the movie of the drama the actor performing the role of mahatma gandhi falls down lies on ground and says hey ra what is required to make that scene most effective since it is the last frame what do you think the actor must look like mahatma gandhi right the the drapery should be matching the character everything that you know the stick that mahatma gandhi ji used to hold in his hand the spectacles the typical frame but the most important element is the actor has to think over contempt contemplate on what gandhi ji must have felt while saying hey ram at that point of time 
unless the actor does not understand it and is not able to relate to that feeling in my opinion the scene cannot be performed effectively all other things are just decorative the most important point is rasa avishkar therefore emotional fitness is also important and that is what is conveyed by this part of the story when indra says that gods are not physically and emotionally fit to perform this then creator has the answer for every question isn't it so creator then calls the author of this text himself sage bharat along with his 100 disciples they could be his sons or just disciples but anyway in our tradition a shishya a disciple is regarded as a son putra so he bharata is invited along with his 100 disciples and then brahma hands over the panchama ved itihasa to bharata and says now bring this into practice and then as we do today they start doing rehearsals this rehearsals must be you know two in two forms one actual enactment and another having a dialogue because our tradition is featured with dialogue having a dialogue with disciples and then they set a play which is obviously about the battle between gods and demons and bharat again approaches lord indra sorry bharat again approaches brahma and tells that the production is ready but now when and where should we perform brahma says oh there is a good occasion we should perform it in indra dhvaja mahotsav or just dhvaja mahotsav which comes on the 12th day of the bright fortnight of the month of bhadra that is the day on which we all i mean all gods celebrate the kingship of lord indra that is perhaps the nearest and suitable occasion what does it mean you know indra after all being the king of gods was the patron of this art it was not possible to perform this drama without the patronage of the king right although gods were not capable of performing it on stage they were capable of financing it they were capable of safeguarding it and that is why probably brahma said that we must do it on the occasion of indra dhvaja mahotsav so everything is set and the play is performed gods as well as demons are in the audience and there are some details which i am avoiding but one uh, you know one incident in the story is very important when this performance begins after a while we find that you know a good chunk in the audience is disturbed they don't like this performance who are they always you know some people don't like a movie or a drama some do like it but this particular first performance was drama that was presented in the heaven itself in front of indra was not liked by a part of the audience they all were danavas demons they did not like you know their defeat shown on stage and then they all approached lord brahma they said oh pitamah the great grandfather what is this we cannot tolerate this you created a means of amusement in which you are showing our defeat why so are we not your offsprings are you supposed to protect only the gods and not us then the creator comes ahead and says no 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 do not misunderstand please 
I did not create this toy only for the sake of gods, only for the satisfaction of gods. I have created it for every living creature, gods, demons, living beings, men, women, everyone. So it should reflect everything that happens around. Again, I would like to remind the audience that why are we discussing this? Because this is our idea of a drama. What should be shown on stage? Right? Drama should contain what? The creator says it does not represent only one part of the society. And then he details about his motive behind creation of Itihasa Veda or Natya Veda. He says that the Natya has been created by me to depict all bhavas and conditions, physical, mental, and spiritual, as based on the world. It delineates the deeds of high, low, and middling. It gives advice indirectly and in a charming way. It contributes to courage, sportful manners, and delight. This Natya will definitely bring about tranquility to the sages afflicted by agony, fatigue, and sorrow because it is Kridaniyaka. The Natya will provide instruction to the worlds on proper dharma, the way to lead a fulfilled life, welfare, artha, and improvement of one's intellect and, and, intellect and so on. So this is the motive that the creator had in his mind behind the creation of Natya. This is our idea of drama. Let's move to the next part. And then there are different types of and the story ends, of course. The demons were happy and then in the later period, different drama productions took place to such an extent that the Shastrakara, that means Bharata, had to classify all these dramas into 10 different types. Nataka, Prakarana, Bhana, Prahasana, Dima, Vyayoga, Samavakara, Viti, Anka, Ihamruga and all. And there are different bases for classification. And this is just a list of you know, these are some major drama productions. These are some major plays that were written in Sanskrit language. So a great author by name Bhasa has written 13 plays. Then Sariputta Prakaranam, a play in Prakrut by Ashwag Hosha. Mruchakatikam is a very popular play. If you have seen the Hindi movie Utsav, Starring Rekha and Shekhar Suman. It is based on the story of Mruchakatikam. And Mruchakatikam itself is based on a drama written by Bhasa. We all know about this place, Mudra Rakshasa. It's, you know, the story of Chanakya. Then uh, Kalidasa's three plays, Abhidnana Shakuntalam, is, you know, the perhaps one of the most popular Sanskrit plays. Now, whatever we discuss till now, I would like to summarize the whole discussion in a different way. I am going to recite one verse from the play Malavika Agnimitram, written by Kalidas. This is said by one Natyacharya, that means the trainer of drama. He is, uh, uh, he is talking about his family. And the way in which they have carried forward the tradition of drama in their family. While doing so, he utters this verse. Let me first recite the verse as it is done. And then we will discuss quickly the meaning part. Deva nami dhamamananti munaya kantam kratum chakshusham rudre ne dhamumakrutavyatikare Swange vibhaktam dvidha. Traigunyod bhava matra loka charitam. Nana rasam drushate. Natyam bhinna rucher janasya bahudha. Pyekam samaradhanam. You know, in a nutshell, Kalidas actually tells us all peculiarities of Sanskrit drama. 
इदम देवानाम कांतम क्रतुम चाक्षुषम मुनय आमनंती दिस इज अ क्रतु दिस इज अ यज्ञ मुनय आमनंती दैट द सेजेस आर परफॉर्मिंग देवानाम ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ गॉड्स we all know the association of drama with gods and with rituals we have already discussed uses a adjective kant chakshusha two adjectives kant and chakshusha for kratu he says that drama or any audio visual media for that matter is like a yajna but this yajna is chakshusha yajna this is not to be performed by using you know the sacred sticks and fire this is to be done by chakshu that means eyes drushyatva of drama and how is this chakshu shakratu this is kanta kratu kant enjoyable pleasing because kridaniya rudrena idam umakrutav vyatikare swange vibhaktam dvidha perhaps the first enactment was done by rudra himself we know the association of shiva in the form of nataraja with drama and rudra is you know the vedic form of lord shiva so perhaps the first enactment was done by rudra by dividing his body into he himself and uma that means parvati the reference is to the ardhanari nateshwar you almost have seen the idol of ardhanari nateshwar half part of shiva and half part of parvati why was it done why why was this done because while bharat was performing you know doing rehearsals of drama they felt that something is missing over here that soothing that charming sentiment is missing over there so nims were created apsaras were created so the reference here is actually to that element or you know we we can explain this in other way shiva performs tandava and the dance that is performed by uma is lasya tandava and lasya are you know like the two points at the end of the scale of rasas navaras me these are the two points at the end of rasas tandava is anger why last said shant and in between lie different emotions expressions so rudrena idam umakruta vyatikare swa ange dvidha vibhaktam traigunyo adbhava matra nana rasam lokacharitam drushyate what should be what should we see in the drama or what should we show traigunya udbhav whatever is originated from triguna that means the whole material world and nana rasam lokacharitam lokacharitam all worldly affairs everything the love and fights the happiness and sorrows nana rasam lokacharitam full of different emotions should be seen in a drama and perhaps because of this natyam bhinna ruchehe janasya bahudhapi ekam samaradhan jana we all bhinna rucha have different likings Bahuda, but probably Natya becomes ekam samaradhanam. Eka here means common. Natya becomes the common means of satisfaction, gratification for people. So at this point, I would like to close my talk and open this session for discussion. Just, just to give an idea of what we are going to do tomorrow. so these are the different elements involved in the performance of drama nandi prastavana bijam vidushak vishkambhak mudra phal etc but these are terms and i would not like to you know discuss these terms and make the lecture like a lecture instead i have chosen the popular play abhidhyana shakuntalam of kalidas and with reference to that play i would like to show how the nandi is actually performed bhut sutradhar what does he do what is the character of vidushaka where whether he is a clown in the circus or someone different right so tomorrow we are 
going to have this demonstration. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Prasant Dine. Uh, this was a wonderful overview of the concepts and practices in Natya Shastra. So um, I see a question on, online, but first of all, let us see whether our students have any anything they would like you to clarify or dwell upon, explain a little more. We, we don't have much time actually now. We have about five minutes. Five minutes. So let's see if there are any questions. There is. Uh, hello, sir. Hello. Sir, so you said that uh, music uh, increases the uh, essence of the, huh. uh, of the uh, drama. So, so um, like there are movies in which uh, they put a lot of music, and uh, there are uh, there are also some movies there where they don't put any music. So, by putting no music, don't you think that uh, it makes the content uh, content more real? Makes the content more, more real. real. Yeah. If if we check the more like reality movies, we don't see any kind of music. Hardly there are there might be music, but um, some ground movies they don't have music, and people like that content too. And they really make the movie more realistic rather than adding music that is right. Realistic. I understand. So it is basically about the point of view. What we discussed in this session is. The way in which plays were performed in ancient India. Our point of view towards a theatrical performance. Right? But someone may have a different view about the performance. About the way in which he or she wants to show. For them, the text, the content, and its verbal delivery. Okay, its delivery only through verbal means is important. They the person might have some motive, right? For not including the music. But it is a general experience that the suitable background music intensifies the expression. That's what it means. Should I take the question in the chat? Yes, if you can read them, please. Let us try briefly to... Yeah. So these two Did we traditionally distinguish between dance and drama? Is the Natya Shastra common to both dance and Nataka? So that's the point that we actually discussed at the beginning. The word Natya itself is derived from Nrutta, which means to dance. Nata is regarded, you know, as uh, an alteration of the verbal root nrutta. So natya was primarily dancical, was in the form of dance and we do get references for this. So I quoted one, natakam nrutyavah or nrutyamah. So let's dance the drama. And natya shastra does not talk specifically about nrutya and natya. Natya, the sense in which we are taking today. Okay, the prose theatrical performance. No. Anything else? Ah, uh, Navarasa's linear or cyclic? <laughs> Strange. Uh, uh, I think the the idea of rasa is quite complex, and it won't be possible to, you know, answer this question at this point of time. And once again, as I said, there are different theories even about the rasa nishpatti. What were popular themes or stories for drama? Were there themes or stories that were considered unsuitable or barred for, from performance? Okay. So primarily, Natya Vastu, the plot, was either Prakhyata or Aprakhyata. Prakhyata means already known. That means based on Ramayana and Mahabharata. And Aprakhyata means completely novel. That's it. But would there be anything that would be regarded as inappropriate or unsuitable uh, for performance? Uh, Are there certain... Not the story, but there were certain incidents which should not be staged. So, for example, death or 
you know a very fierce combat between the warriors what is the underlying thought okay instead of enumerating the things which should not be uh, shown let us try to understand the underlying thought anything that would disturb the audience emotionally to a great extent you know even today on news channels if something you know some visuals even on on social media sometimes we get a note the visuals may be disturbing right so same is the thought thank you yeah this is an appropriate answer i believe thank you very much uh, dr prasad for today and uh, we are very much looking forward to your demonstrations tomorrow where we will have a more vivid contact with all this tradition yes thank you very much and thanks for all those who listen today and i hope you can join us again tomorrow at 10 o'clock thank you